here is probably one of the most popular politicians Australia has ever had, the second longest serving politician, uh, sorry, Prime Minister in the history of the country and one of the longest serving uh, politicians of all time. And Hey guys, Adam Hudson here and I've just walked out of my meeting with the 25th Prime Minister of Australia, Mr John Howard. Well, I really am quite in a surreal state right now about what just unfolded over the last hour. When we walked into his private offices in Sydney, we were greeted by his lovely assistant Sally and uh, Josh and uh, we walked into what can only be described as a museum of accomplishments. Here is probably one of the most popular politicians Australia has ever had, the second longest serving politician, uh, sorry, Prime Minister in the history of the country and one of the longest serving uh, politicians of all time. And when you walk into his office, you are immediately awed by the accomplishments of this one human being. Now here at Reliable Education, and I had Joe, my business partner, by my side throughout this meeting, and Joe had on his wrist, play the long game. And John Howard epitomizes playing the long game. He first went and ran for office in late 60s. He didn't win. He was then later elected to the seat of Bennelong in 1974. Just that alone is a six year journey just to get into parliament. And then he described to me his first day when he walked into the old parliament house, uh, how overwhelming it was and how much of a milestone it was in his life. It took him another two decades, or actually more than that, 22 years to become the 25th Prime Minister of Australia and uh, then he presided over an extremely successful government, a reformist government that created so much change. And I asked him in the interview, you know, what do you say to people about time management? In, you know, 12 years, you brought in the GST, you brought the, the country back into surplus, you presided over the Bali bombings, you uh, were there when 9-11 happened, you uh, reformed the waterfront, you brought GST in, um, you know, you got rid of guns in this country. He did so much and was here for so many critical moments uh, of our, you know, life as Australians from 96 through to the late 2000s. So, you know, it was just extraordinary sitting with a man who's dedicated his life to one mission. And he said, it's so important to achieve great things in your life. It's so important to first have a vision and second, communicate that vision fearlessly to your key people. There were so many takeaways, so many things that I'll share with you. Right now, I'm overwhelmed, to be honest with you, um, having sat with him and interviewed him for an hour. And it really got me thinking that if I can get all the way from Brown's Plains, uh, working in pizza shops, to sitting with a former Prime Minister, what is possible for all of us if we decide? What is possible for you if you stop playing the short game and start playing the long game based on a set of values that are important to you? So starting with your values and then giving it time and action and not only setting the values but articulating them to key people, look what can be done in a lifetime. And as I walked into his private office with a panoramic view over Sydney and the photos of you know, his family behind his desk and the books that he's read, and the meetings that were going on and pictures of him with the Queen that are hand signed by the Queen, quite extraordinary. So I'm really going to go away later tonight when this settles down and uh, I'll be reevaluating what's possible for my own life and thinking in a much longer time frame. He's there, 78 years old, still works every day. His only indulgence is he plays golf on Mondays and he now just comes into work at 10.30 instead of much earlier, which he did for years. So guys, hopefully there's something in that for you. He's gonna be speaking at our summit, which is gonna be amazing. Uh, what an experience. Have a great day, bye for now.